Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, yes, I know the title of my video is a little bit facetious, uh, but I got the joke from a friend of mine who she made a joke about it on Facebook, and it's actually pretty funny when you think about it, uh, because even though I'm kind of conservative and I don't like the term white privilege, metabolic damage and starvation mode actually is a perfect example of white privilege when you really look at it scientifically and socially, and it's really amusing when you think about it. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Work on skilling up my crafting a little bit, and uh, let's talk about this. You know, because that's the interesting thing. You always have certain prep coaches out there, some of whom are involved in science and everything, who will say, well, I've seen so many cases of my clients uh, seeming to have starvation mode and metabolic damage that there has to be something to it. There has to be something biological going on. And it is really funny because the starvation mode idea or metabolic damage is often this idea that people will uh, drop calories so low and up their cardio and everything so high that their metabolism slows down so much that they stop losing weight while in a supposed massive caloric deficit due to physical activity and calorie restriction, or in some cases actually start gaining weight because it's damaged their metabolism to the point to where they just start storing body fat for, you know, due to these hormonal reasons. Now, the ironic part is that which demographic of people seem to be the ones who suffer from this? Uh, there's a very specific demographic subset that suffers from metabolic damage. And it's not inclusive when I say this, I'm talking most. It doesn't mean there aren't people from other groups who fall into these categories, but the majority of people who report this happening off their personal anecdote are generally Caucasian, usually middle to upper class, and the majority of them, not all, but the majority of them are females. Interesting demographic because they all, what they all have in common is they're all economically privileged people who live you know, in first world countries and have enough money uh, to hire prep coaches, to hire coaches for bikini contests, for physique contests. They have disposable income. And they have the luxury of competing in something like that. And this is the biggest group. Competitors in these endeavors seem to be the ones that suffer from this the most. Now, if we were to take that at face value like some people would want us to and want us to actually take this seriously, we run into some real problems. We run into some real problems because you go to any first world country, you go to any country in Africa. When anyone is put on starvation calories, what do they do? Do they stop losing weight? Do they stop losing fat? Do they start gaining fat ever while starving? No. They fucking die. They fucking die. They have organ damage, their body deteriorates, and they eventually die if they're kept on starvation calories indefinitely. All right? They're kept on starvation calories. Now, if we were to look at the different countries where people starve to death, and then we were to look at first world countries where people don't starve to death, like America, and we look at these demographic of people, the biggest difference we would see would be maybe skin color. If we were to take it at face value, because this is happening in places like Africa, that's where most starvation occurs. It occurs in other parts of the world, but that's where your biggest cases are. So would we then just assume that maybe white people are immune to starvation and gain fat when they starve and everyone else dies? Or is there an actual logical explanation? And that's why the joke was it was white privilege because it, it seems to be only middle class and upper class white people have this. But actually we could argue that it's economic status that contributes here. People who have money don't starve to death on starvation calories. Now, we could argue that uh, that is ethnically disproportionate in America, too. But actually, the real factor seems to be money and access to resources. You know why? Because if you can afford food and food is available, you will not ever starve. You see, the reality is, the reality is when we study this stuff and it's been looked at in the lab, starvation mode isn't actually real. In fact, the Minnesota starvation experiment showed us this, that when people are put on starvation type regiments and their food is controlled by the researchers and we don't let them eat, we don't let them secretly eat, we, we try to stop them from hoarding food and binging behind their backs and actually monitor and search them and everything else to make sure they don't have treats stored away. 
people don't ever stop losing weight. The scale gradually goes down for months. Uh, in fact, up to six months, we've studied this, that people, they're still losing weight six months in. When you subject people to really low calories and large amounts of physical activity, they don't ever stop losing weight. So when we actually study it in a lab, there's nothing going on here, but privileged people who can afford to buy food, who have the option, never actually starve. Even when they convince themselves, they convince themselves that they're on really low calories. They're actually not. And what has been noted in the research is that uh, starvation mode is not real. Uh, when people have been put in metabolic wards and put on calories under about 1,500 calories a day, and they are monitored with cameras that track them 24 hours a day. They get to see everything that they eat and they're taught how to keep a food journal. When they're taught how to keep a food journal and how to weigh out their food, how accurately do these people actually weigh their food? They don't. And you know the group that is the most disproportionate is actually females are worse at it than men. And there's good biological reasons for that. That is not meant to say that women are dumb or inferior in any way. Actually, it has to do with the case that women are biologically geared to have more body fat than men uh, to be able to carry babies, all right? And women psychologically are more resistant to forced starvation than men are. Women will not starve to death. They will actually have all sorts of psychological mechanisms that apparently will even give them psychosis to avoid starving to death. They have a stronger survival mechanism for avoiding starvation than men do. Men have it too, by the way, but it's just been noted that women will actually judge their calories even further off. And what I mean is when they're studied in a lab and they're watched with cameras, so you can give them access to food. That's the trick. You give people access to food. It's one thing when you restrict food. You can control people's food when you're the one handing it to them and you're searching them and searching their room and making sure they don't have extra food hidden. But when you put cameras on them monitoring them, and they have access to food and are told to write everything down that they eat, when you put people under about 1,500 calories, they can't actually track their food anymore. And with some of the women, they observed that they would be off by as much as 1,500 or 2,200 calories. That's been seen in studies. And you guys can look this up. I've linked these in the past. I don't have them handy, but they're easy enough to find. And I've linked these before in videos. Meaning, if, you, if women are put on 1,200 calories... 1,200 calories, they won't stay on it. And they will honestly believe they're eating 1,200, but that's starvation. And the brain has survival mechanisms that kick in that will have you eat foods if it's available. You will eat if it's available to avoid eating 1,200 calories. The only way you can put someone on that many calories is to force them, like with lock and key, away from getting the food. That's the only way to do it. And they'll find a way to smuggle it. They will find a way to steal food on that many calories. So you have to have it under lock and key to where they can't get to it. But they will write down 1,200 calories, track it perfectly, and then eat 2,500. And the biggest case that was ever seen in any of these studies I recall was someone thinking that they were eating like 1,100 calories who actually was eating 3,300 calories a day. And they were tracking everything. And when they were shown the camera footage, uh, the, the reports say that they started crying because they didn't remember eating the food. They actually physically could not remember eating that extra food. They swore up and down that they, the footage was fake, that they couldn't have eaten it. Human beings will not starve themselves without mental disorders causing it. Meaning if you've got anorexia nervosa or some other physical disorder, uh, a mental illness, you can force yourself to starve. But without a mental illness being present, human beings are extremely resistant to starvation to the point to where we will hallucinate, develop psychosis and memory gaps in order to keep ourselves from starving. Human beings will not starve to death if they have access to food. They will not even get down to starvation level calories and stay there. They cannot do it without a mental illness or hang up causing it like anorexia or an eating disorder. Uh, humans will develop other forms of psychosis to avoid it happening. So metabolic damage is actually a form of metabolic derangement. And that's the interesting thing. Everyone says, is, well, I did this and I didn't lose weight and I, I track these accurately. No, you didn't because when we study this in the lab, when we study it in a lab, human beings who are in too big of a caloric deficit cannot 
follow the low calories. When your caloric deficit gets too big, people will binge and they absolutely forget that they did it. They for, get a form of amnesia and they actually literally forget. And when they're filmed on camera, they don't actually remember eating the food. All right, and that's what people need to understand. When it comes to your anecdotal reports that I did four hours of cardio a day while on 1,500 calories and stopped losing weight, it's because you, you honestly believe. And that's the thing, that people are convinced of this. Human memory is an interesting thing. People are convinced that they ate that 1,500 calories, but they didn't. They were probably eating 2,800 or 3,000 uh, because they weren't tracking it accurately because you will overeat. That little spoon of peanut butter that they thought, oh yeah, that was about 300 calories that they just kind of measured. They didn't weigh it on a scale. That 300 calories is actually probably eight or 900 because that's what people do. They will, their brain will play tricks on them to make sure that they get extra food to keep them from starving. Uh, basically, you can't run calorie deficits of a thousand or more and maintain it. All right, without some sort of other structure in place to prevent you from binging and prevent you from cheating on it, people will start to cheat on the diet and their brain will force them to do it because your brain is smarter than you are sometimes. People will say, oh, I want to lose weight at this rate. I want to get this lean. The brain will tell you, fuck you, you're not going to do that. And it will play tricks on you subconsciously to keep you from doing it. So that's kind of the thing that people need to understand when it comes to diet and diet adherence. This starvation mode actually isn't true. Uh, when we study people and we force them to eat starvation calories, again, when, when, you know, when they agree to it, but then we force it, people don't ever stop losing weight. When, when they, it can actually be monitored, but when they're allowed to monitor it themselves, people will not follow the starvation level calories. They won't do it. And they will lie about it and they will lie to themselves it will be self-convincing. So when people give anecdotal reports of I did this and stopped losing weight or started gaining weight, yeah, it's because you actually aren't eating what you think you're eating. When we put people in labs and do that, they lose weight for six months straight. They don't ever stop losing weight because they don't have access to other food that they can cheat on. That's forced starvation. When you have people in third world countries, underprivileged countries, and they don't have access to food and they can't steal enough or find something to eat, they die. And that's the reality. All these people who said, oh, I hit starvation mode and, and I stopped losing weight. No, you didn't because you would have been an emaciated or anorexic looking skeleton had you actually eaten what you thought you ate on the activity that you thought you ate or you would be dead. Uh, but that's the crazy thing with the human mind. The human mind will try to stop us from starving to death because starvation uh, <laughs> is something that we as a species are geared to avoid at any cost. And the only people who are capable of doing it to themselves are people who have something broken with them psychologically, such as anorexia uh, or bulimia, an actual eating disorder that allows them to bypass the normal fail-safe that a sane person has. Uh, and, that, and that's the difference that's going on there. Normal people can't actually do it. And that's another reason I point out that eating disorders are so prevalent in physique competition because many people are putting themselves on starvation level calories and sustaining them. That in many cases, that's actually a sign of something being wrong or it will cause the eventual development of psychological issues. Uh, so that, that's something else that people need to consider there. It's something I talk about a lot. But the reality is, yeah, the starvation mode absolutely isn't real. When you study it, uh, it turns out that it's actually psychological trickery in the brain. People really aren't eating these calories when they stop losing weight. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.